preceding the reading from the Acts of the Apostles. On the day of Pentecost, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. People of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man has it over to you, according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in his power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he did at my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before the foundation of the world, 
but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And Jesus said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? Jesus asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in word and deed before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that Jesus was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart, to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. <clears throat> As they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So Jesus went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised Jesus, and he vanished from their sight. The two disciples said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. These were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then the two disciples told what had happened on the road, and how the Lord had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
here in Victoria, particularly with the tragic deaths of four police officers this past week, and then of course as a nation yesterday with the different but equally important commemoration of Anzac Day and all the sacrifice, loss, grief as a result of war. It feels like we are all on a very heavy and profoundly sad journey. But it is to this journey that I think our Gospel reading this morning speaks and gives us as followers of the risen Christ a good deal of reassurance and hope. Perhaps at this time more than ever we can identify with those two disciples on the road to Emmaus, for they too are sad, grief-stricken, fearful, puzzled over the women's claims about Jesus' body and no doubt wondering what the future might hold. This Gospel story has so much in it, especially with all its allusions to the Eucharist, with a meal and the breaking of the bread, invitation, sharing of hospitality, listening to the Scriptures, and their exposition from Jesus himself. Yet I have to admit that this is challenging hearing this particular scripture at a time when we're all physically separated and our experience of the Eucharist, be it through Zoom or YouTube, is just so different and strange. To this very challenging context, what stands out in this account of the disciples travelling to Emmaus is the fact that the risen Christ came and walk with them. Christ came to them in the midst of their sadness and fear. Whether they realised it or not, and of course we know they didn't until later when Jesus broke bread with them. The message here is that we are not alone and that the risen Christ is very much present. And it was a very gentle presence a presence that listened carefully and then responded to the disciples' sadness as well as their bewilderment as to the events of recent days. It was a presence that surprised, taught and gave reassurance. In fact, I think it was a journey of revelation for the disciples, even if they did not fully understand it are all and its implications until later, but culminated in a profound moment of recognition of what they had experienced when Jesus broke bread with them. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? All this in turn propelled and empowered them to continue the journey and share with others their experience and joy of the risen Christ. This story speaks to us here and now. The risen Christ is with us on this very difficult, different and at points profoundly sad journey for all people around the world. 
But as followers of the risen Christ, we are surely to take heart that this, again, is a journey where we are not alone and that the risen Christ is with us, whether we feel it or not at the time. It is an objective reality that we are called to hold on to, especially when our established ways of living and expressing our faith, as in celebrating the Eucharist and offering ministry, is just so different, with all its limitations, as well as even possibly some gifts. Yes, Jesus is present in the breaking of the bread, and while the sharing of that bread in the Eucharist can not take place in the way we are used to, it is still very much happening in the contact we make with each other, be it through email, phone calls, Facebook, or whatever. Through the work of the Lazarus Centre here at St Peter's, a social enterprise, and all the catering staff at Parliament House who are feeding those in need within our community. And of course through our prayers as well, and no doubt in many other ways. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is with us on this journey. But like those two disciples on the road to Emmaus, the challenge for us, I think, is not to become overwhelmed or perhaps even too self-absorbed in our loss and struggle, but to remain open and alert to the risen Christ's presence. A presence not in the usual ways we might expect, but more than likely in the unexpected and surprising events and people that surround us. Yes, Christ is present in the breaking of the bread, and dare I also say, through Zoom and YouTube. The Lord be with you. And also with you.
gracious and eternal God, like the two disciples on the Emmaus Road, we often walk the road of our lives in grief or sadness and without hope. Look past our fragile faith and resurrect our spirits so that we may surely see you in the scriptures and in the breaking of bread. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world in these days of pandemic where there is so much uncertainty and anxiousness. Grant your peace. We pray for doctors, nurses and hospital staff, for governments and emergency services, for relief agencies, and for our own social enterprise food program. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church. We pray for justice. Archbishop of Canterbury, for Philip, our Archbishop, and Geneva, our regional bishop. We pray for ordinance and students of theology in our diocese and our Klinkner scholar, Zavery. We pray for all our congregation at St. Peter's, unable to attend worship in this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who suffer in body mind or spirit for those close to us and for all who have asked our prayers especially margaret brown joe busher priest hannah christiansen alice mccrace grace james lynn nicholas tanya burdick ellen ray john small John Pat, Evelina Thornton, Paul Wilton, Rosemary Wilcox, Jeffrey Broughton, and Joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, following the examples of St. Mark the Evangelist, St. Peter our patron, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and all the saints. May we live our lives in you and be raised to, etern to your eternal presence. We remember the recently departed. For Constable Glenn Humphrey, Senior Constable Kevin King, Constable Josh Presley, Leading Senior Constable Lynette Taylor, and John Lee, Priest and those who hear my souls today, for Jane Eyre, Sister Louise THM, rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let thy light and shall shine upon them. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers, grant that what we ask in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ,